what's up everyone? Game Dad here, coming at you guys with a new collection series. This is a two-parter, and we are taking a look at everything that is currently in my Nintendo DS collection. So, come with me as we check out everything in part one. Up first, we have America's Test Kitchen, Let's Get Cooking, released by Indie Zero in 2010. And this is one of those kind of learning style games where it actually teaches you how to cook. And not only does it teach you various recipes, but it'll actually teach you proper cooking skills as well. So things like, you know, how to hold a knife, how to do different cuts, what types of knives to use, how to find ingredients, things like that. Up next is Cake Mania 2, released by Digital Embryo in 2008, and this game is one of those kind of games that went through a huge type of fad during this time, and this was kind of a tap style game. So what you would do is you would tap and you would get an order, then you would have to make a certain kind of cake, then you ice it, deliver it to the customer, then you get money, and you just keep repeating this over and over, and you try not to mess anything up. Here we have Cooking Mama, released by Cooking Mama Limited in 2006, and this game is a lot like other cooking games, but it combines kind of recipe style stuff with actual like tap style gameplay, and as you can see graphically, it's a lot more pleasing on the eyes, but overall, I mean, it's just another one of those cooking games that was on the DS. There were a ton of them. Here's Cooking Mama 2, Dinner with Friends, released by Cooking Mama Limited in 2007. And same kind of game. You can see that the graphics are pretty much the same. So all they really did was just add a little bit more content to this game versus the regular Cooking Mama. And, I mean, it's okay. They're fun for a while. They're definitely kid-oriented. But, I mean, yeah, it, it's not bad. Here we have Dementium, The Ward, released by Renegade Kid in 2008. And this is a kind of horror style game on the DS. It had some very Resident Evil style vibes to it, but also kind of like point and click adventure, but actually being able to move around in the landscape. So the game is rather graphic for a DS game, but it's still actually pretty fun. It had some pretty interesting stuff going on in it. Up next is Devilish Volbounder, released by Starfish SD in 2005, and honestly, this game is fantastic. I remember the original Devilish games, and this one is just far and above better than those. It's graphically better, they actually give it a kind of storyline, but essentially these are like ball breaker games where, you know, you're hitting all the little panels and stuff, but you're actually moving through the level and taking out bosses and stuff like that. Up next is Diddy Kong Racing DS, released by Rare in 2007, and honestly, I love that there's a DS version of this game. It was one of my top favorite N64 games. I loved Diddy Kong Racing. I loved how you could do carts, or you could do planes, or hovercraft, or any of those things, and how it's not just a racing game, it's actually an adventure game, but the way you play the levels is you do racing. So, super fantastic game. Up next is Diner Dash Flow on the Go, released by Play First in 2009, and this is another one of those tap style games, just like Cake Mania. So you're going through and you tap on the different orders, and then you have to make all the orders, get them delivered, make sure you send them to the right people, and it just gets progressively more difficult. These games, I gotta say though, are pretty addicting once you get going, but the gameplay can get stale over time because it's always the same thing over and over. And here we have Disney Princess Enchanting Storybooks, released by THQ in 2011. And this game is actually kind of special to me in my collection because this is the very first game that my oldest daughter ever picked out. So, I mean, it's not any kind of crazy, awesome gameplay or anything like that. It's just a storybook game. But it's special for me because it was the first game I got to get with my daughter. That way we could play something together. Up next is Drawn to Life, released by Fifth Cell in 2007, and this game is unique in the fact that everything in the game is something you draw in the beginning of it. So it asks you a bunch of different questions, and you have to draw a bunch of different things out, and I gotta say, what a unique concept for a game, and it's super fun. It's got a really great story to it, and just overall fun gameplay. And here we have Elements of Destruction, released by Black Lantern Studios in 2007. Now, anyone that's ever played a SimCity game is all too familiar with natural disasters. And this game kind of takes that and 
makes a game out of the natural disasters. So you're going around and instead of trying to build up the city, you're trying to destroy it by using tornadoes and lightning and all this crazy different stuff to just take everything out. Up next is Guitar Hero on Tour Decades, released by Vicarious Visions in 2008. And this is a follow-up to the handheld version of Guitar Hero. Pretty unique accessory that came with it. I gotta say it was actually a really cool way that they got this game to be able to be playable on a handheld without having a guitar. So really fun if you've ever played any Guitar Hero game. It plays just like them, except you're playing on the DS and using the little accessory that came with it. Up next is Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, released by EA Bright Light Studio in 2009. And this game is exactly what you'd expect. The Harry Potter games aren't known for being, you know, super amazing or anything like that. But you do kind of just play through the movies and you get to do some kind of fun gameplay along the way. Overall, though, these definitely aren't like AAA titles. Up next, we got Lego Batman the Video Game, released by TT Fusion in 2008. And if you've ever played this game on any consoles, it's the same thing, but on a handheld. And it's pretty cool being able to have touch controls and stuff like that with it. Using the second screen on the DS, you actually get a lot more menu options and different things going on. So that was really cool as an additional kind of HUD element. But overall, I mean, it's just like every LEGO game. You're going around, completing each piece of the story, collecting as many studs as you can. Here we have LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga, released by Traveler's Tales in 2007. And just like the ones on the console, I mean, it's the same thing, just on the DS. And the game is fun. I didn't really like this one. I actually liked, I believe it was episode three or something. Uh, that one was actually a really fun game. Not a great movie, but it was a fun game. Up next is The Little Mermaid, Ariel's Undersea Adventure, released by Gorilla Systems in 2006. And this was another one that my daughter picked out and she wanted to be able to play with dad. So got this one for her. Unfortunately, I was not able to get any kind of captured footage for it. It just would not work. And anyone who has ever tried to capture DS or 3DS footage knows it is notorious for being annoying and difficult. So unfortunately, that was the case with this game. And here we have The Lord of the Rings Conquest, released by Artificial Mind and Movement in 2009. And this was another one I just couldn't get footage to capture for it. But overall, I mean, pretty fun Lord of the Rings game. It's no Shadow of Mordor or anything like that, but not bad for a handheld game to take on the go. Here's a super fun one. That is Mario Hoops 3 on 3, released by Square Enix in 2006. And it's such a cool, like, RPG-style three-on-three basketball game and anyone who has ever played Mario sports games in the past knows that these games are super fun super addicting and this one is no different it's got all kinds of extra elements and stuff in it and just like you would expect from a Square Enix game it really stands the test of time up next is Mario Party DS released by Nintendo in 2005 and if you've ever played a Mario Party game this is the same thing Honestly, this one is way better than the one on the 3DS as well. The one on the 3DS, I just I didn't really care for that much, but this one was super fun. The mini games were great. It was exactly what you would expect from a Mario Party game, and yeah, I mean, it was a ton of fun. Here we have Monsters vs. Aliens, released by Activision in 2009, and this is yet again another one that my daughter picked out. She loves the Monsters vs. Aliens movie, and she wanted to be able to play the game, and she has been having a blast with this. Anytime we sit down and play it, she just goes to town playing as uh, the lady, what is her name, Ginormica, I believe, and she has a blast playing it, so I figure it's uh, well worth the investment. Last up for this video is My Sims, released by EA Redwood Shores in 2007, and this game has a very, it's hard to say, not like a Harvest Moon kind of vibe, but kind of like an Animal Crossing vibe to it, but with the Sims. So, I mean, it it's okay, it's just weird. It feels like a really dumbed down version of a Sims game, but still with various customizable options, I guess you could say. So there you have it everyone, that is the first half of my current DS collection. Be sure to tune in next week because we will have part two for you on Wednesday where we will be taking a look at all of the remaining games in my current DS collection. Now if you liked today's video, please let me know down in the comments below and while you're down there, please be sure to also hit those like and subscribe buttons as well as that little notification bell so you can alert every time I got a new video coming out. Now as always, I'm Game Dad. I thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you later.